Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Holy Trinity. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Son. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Now, yesterday, we have done so many sessions on the spiritual gifts, but it's only a beginning. It's only a beginning. Some, some of you might have experienced manifestation of the Holy Spirit through vision, through interpretation, through word of knowledge. Some of you might have not got anything. But that should not be a minus point for you. As you already we made the anointing prayer and it is already it is already it's already ankurit hota hai. It is already sprouting. Sprouting. Because we heard it, the, the word says it is given to everyone. So you have to believe it is given to everyone. So don't have any doubt, oh, this is not for me. It is only for very special people. Every one of us is very special. God has not made another person like you. <laughs> Understand? God has not created another person like you. Every one of us is unique and with with, with very, very special gifts. Now, these three days, workshop or seminar is only a, only a taster, just for the taste. But during this time when you receive various prayers, it will start working in the coming days. In the coming days, once when I was <clears throat> preaching in Divine Retreat Center, so everybody comes and share their experiences, but one man had no experience. He came and told, brother, I had absolutely no experience. <laughs> I was very sad too. I said, don't worry, I will pray for you. <clears throat> so I had another retreat in the next week also in the Divine Retreat Center. So next week this man came back. He said, brother, when I reached home, my wife looked at me and said, hey, what happened? You are so different. Then only my experience started. <laughs> and he felt, he felt so joy. And he came all the way traveling half a day to tell me that. <laughs> and to give a testimony. He said, I want to give a testimony. So therefore be careful when you reach your house. <laughs> when you reach your house back, your companions, sisters, or your superiors will look at you. Hey, hey, are you the same? So then your experience will start. <laughs> the experience comes not only vision or listening, the experience relating to your heart filled with the love of God. When after this retreat, when you go home, or this workshop, when you go home, when your 
people understand your expressions your behavior you are speaking eh? there is a difference in you you are different what can be the difference the difference is transmitting of the love of god love of god of course all the work of the holy spirit everything is related to serving serving okay now having said that i want to now i have many other uh, i have to talk more about the charisms but now i am inspired to talk another aspect of evangelization in evangelization how jesus himself did now we heard yesterday or the uh, first day that jesus called the apostles and he sent them he gave them all the charisms and he sent them and according to matthew how they were going everybody heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons oh your sound is not enough come on everybody heal the sick raise your hand and proclaim heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons louder heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons if you are sleeping in the dormitory be careful in the night some of you may suddenly start speaking heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons shall i pray for that that is what day and night day and night you know i am a married man so i am not sleeping in the dormitory i am sleeping with my wife so this happens sometimes in the night i scream out some word of god and my wife say shh, 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 keep quiet keep quiet keep quiet because it becomes a obsession in us and that is what in the psalm number 1 says the first psalm the first psalm says saavum pagalum avan adine kurichu dhyanikunnu psalm number 1 rather the law of the lord is his joy god's law they meditate day and night day and night this is about jesus rather the law of the lord is his joy god's law he meditate day and night then what will happen what will happen to such people they are like a tree planted near the streams of water that yields fruits in season it leaves never feather whatever they do prosper whatever they do prosper say that say that with the full confidence whatever they do prosper come on louder whatever they do prosper <laughs> look at this man thomas paul i have full confidence anything i do prospers you know what is the reason i meditate the law of the lord day and night 
<laughs> so this word is applicable to me. He is like a tree planted at the riverside. Its leaves are always green and give, gives fruits in the season. Whatever do prospers. This is very important. Uh, we have Bible. Sometimes we open and read. That is not enough. He meditate day and night. Shall I sing it in Malayalam? <laughs> All the Psalms. This is another testimony. I have written so many songs. I was so proud. I have many cassettes. Oh, so many people are appreciating Thomas Paul's songs, etc. And one day, then I was about to write more. Then the Lord said, stop writing. <laughs> oh, what happened, Lord? So many people want my cassettes. Even the cassettes are sold in black. <laughs> People duplicated my cassettes and selling in black. Such demand. And the Lord say, stop writing. I heard it very clear. Stop writing any more songs. I closed the book and I said, Lord, I am sorry, what have I done wrong? He said, I have written 150 songs. Why are you not singing that? <laughs> I have written 150 songs. All that songs I personally was singing. Singing. Why are you not sing why are you not singing? I tell you, I still remember, I immediately prostrated down and repented. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, 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 sorry. Thereafter, I lost or I gained such a passion for the Psalms. And then, when I began to Learn the Psalms, sing the Psalms, then only I realized every Psalm is about Christ, about Christ. Every Psalm. And Christ and Blessed Mother, they together were singing every day many Psalms. Day and night they were singing. So it was the culture of Israel, the whole Israelites, they used to pray Stunden Gibet, that is hourly prayers through the Psalms. That is how today we have the divine office. It came from that time, from the time of David. Israelites were their life. Their life is in the rhythm of the Psalms. Their life is in a rhythm. They cannot walk. They only dance and walk. They carry the bottles of the water and sing. They sweep the garden and sing. They make the watering and sing. They cut vegetables and sing. Always their life, morning to evening, in the rhythm of the Psalms. And so also now my life is like that. Now our team, Shaji, Shimi, and all of them, we began to make music for all the Psalms. Then we realized this is a great school. It's a great school. We sing psalms like repetition. We have to focus 
Every Sam is a prayer of Jesus. Jesus is the high priest. And this high priest, every day, morning and eve to evening, throughout his life, he was praying psalms. So that is what the first psalm says. Ravum pagalumavan adine kurich. Shaji? Shaji? Our singer is here. He's not there. Ravum pagalumavan adine kurich. Dhani kunno. Neev chali narige nattadum. Yatha kalam balam tarunnadum. Ila kuriyata dumaya vrichambole yanavan. So, see, this is how the Holy Spirit is guiding. I wanted to talk on prayer, how the Holy Spirit brought me to praying Psalms. Okay. Now, in the, our evangelization, we have to improve our prayer. Prayer is the battery power for evangelization. Now, Luke chapter, so we understood Luke and Matt explained how Jesus called them, gave them and sent them. And Luke chapter 9, at the end of that first sending, Luke chapter 9, at the end of the chapter, he called many, but nobody is going. Nobody is going. Luke chapter 9, beginning, he called them, he sent them. But at the end of the Luke chapter 9, Seven, fifty-seven, fifty-seven. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. <clears throat> Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Son of man has nowhere to rest his head. Now, the interpretation of this also you must learn, but I am not going into that now. And to another he said, follow me. That's the point. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury the dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. So in the nutshell, Jesus is teaching us how urgent, how important is the evangelization. When a man said, I have to bury my father, is there anything as important as that in one's life? Is there anything duty bound to that person? Anything else? Some. Shaji, I Sangirtanam Padan. So you be here, we will sing. <laughs> I remember when my father died, he used to say before that, next time I will not be here when you come. 
I said, no. The Lord will plan in such a way that when I am with you, you will die. <laughs> because he knew if I am preaching a retreat, I will not come for his burial. Because I have to fulfill this word of God. Let the dead bury the dead. You preach my kingdom. He knew this. <laughs> so he often said, next time I will not be. But I said, the Lord may grant me such a situation. When I am at home, you will die. So exactly it happened. All others who were in the Kerala, none of them were there. But he died in my hands. But the matter is not at I had a very important program in Poland that was planned two years back, taking pre-qualification pre of my eligibility to preach a retreat to the whole theologians of the diocese. So they are religion teachers. So the bishop must approve Particularly, a man who has no theological study, so he had a little difficulty to approve. So, finally, he approved me because I had so many letters of appreciation and uh, letters of recommendation from so many bishops of India that this man is teaching true Catholic teaching based on catechism of Catholic Church and papal teaching. He said, that's what I want. So, but this program fallen just after three days of the death of my father. I was full of sadness. I rang up them and said my father died just today, now, can you postpone this program? <laughs> he said, impossible, impossible. Because it is, all these theologians have taken leave and uh, planned their holidays in such a way. It was compulsory, everyone should participate. And Bishop has very specially made instruction and everything, so you cannot change this. And the organizer said, Thomas Paul, have you not taught us this word? <laughs> I said, yes, yes, I will come. So next day I had to travel. My heart was full of that sadness. But for the kingdom of God, I remember that emotion. And I remember that anointing at that time. And I remember the urgency of the kingdom of God. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom. Because kingdom of God proclamation cannot be transferred to the next day. Your father died. Somebody else can bury him. But more important than that is the kingdom. Will you do that? This is the passion of evangelization. You must recognize what Jesus considered evangelization is the most important task of the church. So in Lumen Gentium or all the documents says church 
exist for evangelization. Can you get that passion? Or you give, oh, I will go home after my home visit. I will do that. Then afterwards, if I have time, I will proclaim. Then no soul you can win. That means you have no passion. You have no power. You are doing something after everything is over. The teaching of the church and the mind of the church and the mind of God is revealed in this. And next one, he says, I want to go and say goodbye to my parents. Father, family said, No, now you go. Nobody is coming. Now, what Jesus did, that's what I want to bring home. What Jesus did, He chose 72 others. Chapter 10. Then, after this, the Lord appointed. 72 others now very careful what was their task whom he sent ahead of him he did not go he sent ahead of him for what in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. So, pray to the master of the harvest to send the laborers for his harvest. Now this, in another language, he began a prayer apostolate. Prayer apostolate. This in our religious oh, terminology, a contemplative apostolate. Contemplative apostolate. That reminds me, Mother Teresa began an active apostolate going to the Gutters in Calcutta catching so many lepers and all that thing. But she parallelly began a contemplative apostolate, which is not known to many people. A contemplative congregation she began. More than 200 sisters. Maybe 20 contemplative houses were day and night prayer. I was instrumental to give intimacy retreat to this group of sisters to make them more sharp and more committed. That was the power for this active apostolate who has more than 5,000 sisters. That is the success of MC congregation. And in our life, God has said the same thing to me when the Lord inspired me. Did I say that? When I was praying at the tomb of a European missionary, I heard the voice, come to my country and help people. And then first thing the Lord inspired me to begin was to start a prayer house to pray for Europe. And we began to pray day and night. And then only I could reach Europe. And as soon as we went, I took my gold group 
Shaji was also there and other four people. As soon as we landed there, first thing we started was day and night adoration. Even now it is going on there. And that becomes the powerhouse for evangelization. So Jesus in chapter 9, he sent them, but at the end of chapter 9, nobody is going. No occasion. He called them, but they are not coming simply. Even in our case, so many has come, but you see, because of various reasons, sorry to say, many are going away. Why? That is what Jesus said. A man planted good seeds but suddenly next day or after a few days they realize so many weeds are in between so the worker said master we planted good seeds what happened so many weeds in between <laughs> when you were sleeping the devil came and planted the weeds shall we pluck it out no 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 let them grow at the end, I will first remove them, then the good. But if you now pluck it, you may harm the good seeds. This is a big example for us. What was the reason? In the night, the devil comes. So what we should have done? We should have prayed day and night. When we do not pray day and night, we open our mission area for the activity of the devil in the night. Day and night power is required. So many religious joined with great enthusiasm to give their life for the Lord and they successfully become even ordained or religious or priest. They were ordained, they were professed and after some time suddenly some bad relationship or bad things comes and they just go away. Why? It is really the work of the devil to destroy the work of the evangelization because our lack of prayer. Our lack of prayer. Now from this you can recognize, you see in the diocese or in the congregation such best, best, best once were snatched away. The reason is lack of prayer the way we must pray. So he began a prayer apostolate. So chapter 10 must be understood. Chapter 9, sending of the apostles for evangelization. <laughs> but nothing happening. So he chose 72 others. They are not apostles. They are lay people. Send them with a clear instruction. You go sit and pray. The harvest is abundant. Labors are few. He gave them clear instruction. You see the instructions. What are the instructions? First thing. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among the wolves. Lambs among the wolves. So you are going not with a red carpet welcome. You are going into the land of wolves. 
you will be attacked you will not be respected you will have complete objection obstruction persecution but what is the meaning lamb in the midst of wolf and be prudent like a serpent be simple like a dove so how we have to learn this so when a lamb be sent to the midst of the wolf why jesus do this is is jesus is such a fool to send a lamb at the midst of the wolf so that the wolf will tear and eat the lamb what is the meaning of that inside this lamb the lord himself is there i am with you <laughs> go like a lamb in the midst of the wolf but believe i am the lion of juda is in you when you confront believe i will not leave you orphans i am with you the lion will come out now the lamb become lion to conquer the wolf but very important teaching is given the next very important what is that carry no money bag no sack no sandals and greet no one along the way <laughs> is it a christian don't greet anybody but it is very precise to these people who are called for contemplation carry sorry one minute 